Tablets are an interesting thing. Depending on the brand and budget, their capabilities and enjoyment can vary widely. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and it's been just over two years since I last reviewed Amazon's Fire HD 10 tablet. Since then, Amazon's been working on some improvements to this wallet-friendly tablet. In this review of the all-new for 2021 Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet, which is technically the 11th generation, I'll look at what's been improved and if it's noticeable, how well the tablet works overall, what you can do and download, and whether I recommend it for you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing as well, since both help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. So what's new for 2021? This tablet looks largely the same as it did a couple of years ago, and to be truthful, most of the improvements are found on the inside. You can, however, multitask easier with the split screen option and show two compatible apps side by side. This isn't super intuitive, so for detailed instructions on how to do this and how to manage your tabs, you can look for my short video tutorial here on the channel. This tablet does have a more powerful processor and 50% more RAM than the previous generation. The 10.1 inch 1080p full HD display is 10% brighter than previous generation with more than 2 million pixels. The tablet has improved battery life up from 10 hours on the previous generation to 12 hours now. And the front facing camera has also been improved. It's now a two megapixel camera. I hate to say it, but this tablet does feel a bit like a budget tablet. It feels a bit light, kind of hollow, and it is kind of fat and will be more so if you add a case. And it can even lean towards feeling a bit cheap. But with that said, it seems fairly durable and the screen is large and bright. This is not a showy tablet. It is definitely more of a workhorse. Think of it maybe as a Jeep, where some other brands, I guess, could be Porsches. Even so, once you get past the bare bones looks, this is a pretty powerful and versatile tablet and you're definitely not buying it because of the looks anyway, right? If you're getting this tablet, you are buying it because it is inexpensive and has most of the features that you're looking for for either home, school or work. Some have complained the Fire tablets are laggy and to be honest, past versions have been. So I renewed a comparison that I did the last time where I compared the old Fire HD 10 and the Fire 8 to my Apple iPad Pro to see how long it takes to open apps. You can visit techgadgetscanada.com to see the full comparison and the details if you want. The gist though, I didn't really find the new 2021 Fire HD tablet to be noticeably faster at opening apps or swapping between them. This tablet is loaded with apps and productivity tools, and there's even an option to get a one-year subscription to a software bundle from Microsoft. That's Microsoft 365 Personal, if you also purchase the optional keyboard. On the 2021 Fire HD 10 here, you get a web browser called Silk. There's an email app, things like maps, contacts, calendar, calculator, docs, weather, and a bunch more. If you want to have most of the functionality of a small tablet computer, this device will definitely put all the right pieces in front of you. Of course, a big draw will also be the Kindle app for reading books. Once you're signed in, you will have access to your full Kindle library without having to re-download them all again. Obviously, the Amazon App Store comes loaded onto this tablet so you can download other apps that you might want, but the Google Play Store is not available for those who might be wondering. I quickly added Spotify, YouTube, Netflix, Instagram, Twitter, Google Keep, which is a really cool organizer and note keeping app, uh, and a few others. I found many of the daily apps that I use on my iPhone, for example, were also available in Amazon's app store. So that was a nice surprise. Disappointingly though, and I did note this two years ago, Audible for audiobooks is still not available in Canada. So using that app is still not possible. Also, I can't see tools like Canadian banking apps or Canadian news apps, but there are a bunch of American news apps. Someone on my Instagram feed at ErinLYYC also asked me about Fortnite and a quick search of the Canadian app store for Amazon here on the tablet shows it's not there either. So if certain apps are important to you, you'll want to check that you can access them on a Fire tablet. I think cameras on tablets are mostly superfluous. 
I'm almost never lugging around my tablet when I actually want to take a photo. But with that said, more and more people are using their tablets for things like video calling, so an improvement to the front-facing camera does seem to make some sense. You can use Amazon's A-Lady app for video calling, or you can chat with anyone who has an Echo Show. You can look up the detailed how-to instructions at techgadgetscanada.com if you want, but in essence, to use it, you'll open the A-Lady app on your Fire tablet and choose Communicate from the bottom menu bar. When it comes to taking photos with this tablet, the camera delivers marginal at best photography. This is not a device you'd want to use for taking pictures. The photos lack depth, contrast, and color vibrancy. It also does seem to struggle mightily with focus. The video camera on this tablet isn't 4K or even 1080p HD, it is a less sharp 720p HD video recording. It probably sounds like I'm really ragging on the poor 2021 Fire HD 10. Despite some of my critiques, watching videos on the new Fire HD 10 is okay, actually. <laughs> The screen is big and wide and actually provides a really good quality image and it is pretty bright. There was no lag and no buffering in my video watching testing, so maybe that's where the speed improvements are going to be most noticeable. Days. They total over nine million dollars. As I mentioned earlier, there is better battery life on the new 11th generation Fire HD 10 tablet. It now has up to 12 hours of power and this, by the way, outdoes even Apple's iPad Pro. Naturally, battery life will vary based on things like your device settings, usage, and other things, including your web browsing, downloading, and which apps you're using. It does take an agonizingly long four hours to recharge the tablet using the USB-C adapter, which is way too long in my opinion. It'll take even longer, by the way, if you're trying to use it while you charge it. So does Canada get show mode yet? Amazon was touting its show mode for its Fire tablets a couple of years back. This essentially turns the tablet into a de facto Echo Show smart device with visual info screen. Show mode, though, has never been available in Canada, and yet again, it does not make an appearance in the 2021 Fire HD 10. I reached out to Amazon to ask why things like Audible and Show Mode are still MIA in Canada, but I wasn't able to get any concrete information to explain their absence or when or if they might be coming in future tablet updates. Overall, I don't know how much the average consumer will notice the improvements on the new Fire HD 10. With that said, this tablet is good for video viewing and would be a really good budget tablet to take traveling or on road trips, particularly since you can use it for fun and games or use it to create documents for work if you want to. Amazon has kept the price at $199 Canadian, and that's what the previous version was priced at, and that makes it an absolute bargain compared to some other tablets out there. But of course, it does have its limitations. Many apps and games are just not available through the Amazon App Store. On the flip side, the battery life is much better, and it even leapfrogs fancy tablets from Apple, but the long charging time is kind of a downside. The bottom line with this tablet is that it's pretty good, but it's probably best suited to kids and teens or folks that don't need to do a lot with their tablets. Anytime I come across a feature that isn't as great or might need some improvement on this device, I have to remind myself that the Fire HD 10 tablet costs a fraction of what other tablets cost. So if certain features are important to you, you can definitely get them on other devices, but you're going to pay for that. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got a full write-up posted. You can ask me any questions you have about this tablet, either there on the blog or, as always, here on the YouTube channel. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please do hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Both of those things help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always reach me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada. Naturally, battery life on your tablet will based very much on your, will based, will be based, chat with anyone who has an Echo Show device. Sorry, I don't know that.